Do you see that? Do you see that? Do you see what I've done here, Matt? Do you see my magnificence? Yeah. Why am I broadcasting? All right, well, look, welcome. This is um, obviously a break from our regular play test. So, Matt, do you have your survivor handbook? as right. everything you, you need to know, your character sheet, everything. It's also also plugged into the game. And with that said, just give me a second to make uh, Matt an angry old woman in reality. All right, so that's done. Okay, beautiful. You mean in reality? <laughs> well, but, you know, like, like, let's just take your, your like true nature out of this. I am already there, Sam Jim. I love it how you always take the old characters. All right, beautiful. Um, all right, beautiful. All right, so let's get rolling. So um, just a little bit of background. You're on Pele Island, which is midway between uh, – it's in Lake Erie. So, in fact, let me do this. Let me share my screen uh, so you can I can pull up the map and show it to you. All right, can you all see that map of the island now? uh no in video ninja oh no i just see your discord oh am i sharing the wrong window hold on one second discord discord ah there we go it's being a bozo all right can I you see that. that now i do yeah all right fantastic so <clears throat> just to kind of level set where we are. So this is in uh, Lake Erie, right? So Detroit's up here, Sandusky's down here to later. You can see the lay of the land, but it's actually Canadian, right? So it's part of, uh, it's the, the township of um, Pele Island in Ontario. So that's where we start out, right? And so uh, to kind of set the scene, this is a, a real island, right? And, it, you know, year round, it has about 235 residents. Um, we, we start out uh, almost, uh, it, it's 914 days since the first recorded death, right? So um, there was one outbreak of the dog flu almost two years ago. And roughly like 85, 86 out of the 235 residents died, right? So everyone quarantined and locked down until the outbreak subsided. And then after that, 75 or so more residents decided they were going to leave before uh, Matt, which is Matt, the angry old lady, uh, before before she closed the docks in the airport, right, to kind of quarantine the island and keep themselves to themselves. So no one has come or gone since, right? So a few people have died of natural causes, old age, accidents in the last couple of years. And there's like... There's actually 68 people left on the island. So those who remain, mostly older people, people who had family who remained there and they wanted to stay with them or people who've lived there the whole life or people who stayed nowhere else to go. There's no real el electricity on the island. Uh, Doug, who is being played by uh, Grumpster this evening, he's uh, kind of, he, he owned a car repair shop. So he's built a few windmills on the island, but what they generate is marginal, right? So it powers a few batteries and portable generators, but otherwise, like, there's no power. There's still gas to the island, right? But there's no, there's no real power to speak of so um barter and trade are very common everyone's mostly working in tandem people that have lived there lived there their whole lives again there's roughly 70 people that have left most of you that are uh, playing this game the player characters you've all held a position of influence in the town right so we've got the mayor we've got someone that was the police officer at one point like police officer in ontario but like retired back to the town We've got uh, the person that was uh, has turned into the town nurse, right? Like, you, you know, um, Mina, you, or Jenny, I should say. Uh, Jenny was a vet and uh, really the only person on the, t on the island left with any <clears throat> medical experience. And then Doug, who's kind of the deputy fire chief. He was deputy mayor at one point, so people jokingly call him Deputy Doug, who again owns a, a car repair shop on the island. A a any questions about anything I've said so far? Well, I got good news. Nobody has tapeworms or heartworms. So You're far. Welcome. So far. <laughs> like, no, we'll... Jenny's on the case. <laughs> <laughs> Nurse Jenny, I like that. I like that. All right. So if you look at your character sheets, uh, you'll see there is a background, right? So, um, you know, there's kind of a story there. It's not particularly uh, relevant to what's going to happen this evening. It's not like there's... Um, you know, uh, a kind of a backstory there that's kind of, you know, no one has a dark secret on their character sheet that's going to come into play later, right? But it's just a little bit more color and background for you. All right, so uh, any questions before we, we move on? I've got one. It says I'm congenial. What does that mean? Kind of friendly, like I know that. And again, Matt, this is going to be a, this is going to be a test of your, your role-playing abilities, brother. That's what friendly. this is going to be a test of. 
Friendly. friendly. What's that? Warm, friendly. <laughs> and you became mayor by winning everybody over with your kind of like your abilities, right? So, I, you know, you know, I, I think this is uh, something that shouldn't be underplayed, right? So, There's this thing called heart and compassion. I never come across those before either. Once. Matt, you Man, will. That, that is totally you in real life, though. Come on. <laughs> It really is, isn't it? I mean, it, it really is. He's kind of playing it down, but I feel that, like, you know, Matt, this is you through and through. So, like, just... I know, just you, you can't fool us. <laughs> live up to it, Matt. Just just lean into it. And by the way, Matt, the, yep. are you looking at the Twitch stream? Are you seeing my beautiful handiwork of, like, getting all the tokens updated and stuff? Pretty cool, right? Uh, I got I got blank screen on my Twitch. Hold on. Uh, I, will, I will. Well, one moment, one moment. Ping, ping. Oh, very nice. Right? How cool is that? Like, I, 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 yeah. I, again, not everything's perfect, right? But I did all of this in a rush this evening, so I'm kind of getting there. But, like, I, I kind of feel that I've taken what you've given me and I'm building on it. So I just wanted to call you out again and, and <laughs> say thank you for everything you've done, you you miserable old lady. All right, back to the, uh, back, back to the, uh, th this evening's entertainment. All right, so. Take it off dark mode. Take it off dark mode. Take what off dark mode? Uh, the uh, screeny thing. Otherwise, you can't read. Yeah, roll twenty. You can't see the can't see the numbers. Or the Interesting. Yeah, pain in the bum. Look. All right, so I, I need to spend more time on Roll20. Oh, sorry, on on OBS. And I say this. I know Matt's laugh like becomes me. Right. All right, so. Um, you, you might want to look back in indeed to the um, uh, to the cut the the uh, the shared screen right so if you and again let me put this map link into the chat so you can all click around on it but this has all of your starting locations right so that link is now in our Monday night chat session um, if you click on that as always you'll be able to kind of like zoom in on any of these items so Jenny this is sorry. Oh, it says Melissa. I haven't updated it. So, uh, Melissa, you have an identity crisis. So you're you're also known as Jenny. This is where you are. Okay. Um, Doug, this is where you start this evening. Um, Martha, you're at home, kind of cursing the world in in your vineyard here. And I didn't realize until I actually earlier this evening this Martha's vineyard, uh, but uh, unintentional, right? So that's I your. I was about that. Da -da -da. No, not intentional. Until I, I, I should, I should say these things out loud because it was only when I, I, I had, I had one of the uh, the PDF screens reading to me, and I was like, Martha's vineyard, really. So anyway, um, and then this is where Pete starts, right? So. Um, it's it's afternoon, right? It's it's uh, early or like just afternoon, I should say, in early September, right? So it's a beautiful day. Um, you're all doing whatever you would be doing normally on on a you know on a September morning, um, but but you hear a plane flying overhead, right? And it just causes a stir instantly, right? As soon as you hear it, like you get that feeling in your stomach that something's happening. This is the first contact in almost two years with anyone. And that's a sound that just sounds very, very foreign at this point, even though you used to be very familiar with it coming in and out. So it sounds like a small plane, right? I mean, it sounds like, a, you know, that, that kind of, you know, a Cessna or whatever kind of light plane that people would use. It doesn't sound like a, a jet or anything along those lines, but you can hear it somewhere off in the distance. So if you look on the front cover, it's a little bit small, but if you lo look on the front cover of your uh, Survivor handouts, you'll see that there's an X, right, which is where you start. And again, I've already kind of pointed out where you're starting. So, um, you know, it, it, it's... I'd love it if you could help me fill in the gaps here, right? If we could kind of run around and everyone say what they were doing uh, when they heard the plane overhead, right? And kind of introduce your characters to the other ones. I know that some of you are only seeing the, uh, the character sheet for the first time now. But just give everyone a sense, like, look at the three words on your character sheet, kind of uh, if you've looked at the background or the skills or anything or, or the attributes, wh whatever you think that you'd relate to someone, people that have lived on this island with you, and you'll know each other at this point because there's only 70 people left on the island, so you're all pretty close. Just take a minute and run around and talk about what you're doing when the plane over it comes overhead and what the other players would know about your character. So, Matt, let's start with you. M Mayor Martha. Um, I assume I will have put a couple of other people in charge with me for stuff. Uh, are we do we have we alienated ourselves? It says that we broke off 
sort of connection with everyone are we fortifying that or are we just why don't you tell me nobody can come well i'm genial so i'm saying sure we allow so, people to leave so um but no one's tried to come back what comes up yeah, so no one's tried to come back, right? So there's no fortifications, there's no protocols to speak of, right? Like, I mean, two years, you kind of shut down the airport, no one's listening in on the radio. There's a few high-powered radios on the uh, on the island, right? You know, like, the, you know, in the, the airport itself, there's a dock, there's a municipal center with the mayor's office and the police station. So there's areas that have, like, radios and stuff. But, like, no one heard anything during the monitoring while you guys were listening to it. Like, nothing was ever heard, right? So, no. No, no, no fortifications unless you feel as mayor you may have done otherwise or done more. Uh, does it look like it's coming to the airport, the plane, or is it just overhead? So far, you're not even sure where it is, right? You can hear the noise, but like wh whether or not you're still in your house, right? So, um, uh, you know, we'll have you come out and kind of like take a walk and you know go to the to, to towards the sound in a second if you're so inclined. But right now, uh, you, you don't even know where it is. You just know it's overhead. I think I'd be calling the bitty dog uh, and seeing if he can hear it too. Well, when you say call him, like you're at your house here, let me just put that in context, right? So, you said we had a radio, yeah. So, yeah. So, if you have a walkie talkie or if you decide you want a walkie talkie, then you and Doug have them. Okay. <coughs> Morning, Doug. <laughs> There's something you don't hear very often. <laughs> <laughs> so you haven't picked up. Who you dug in the okay. nicest possible way? <laughs> hey Doug, do you think you might have heard the sound, or are you making like are you banging around too much? <laughs> Who's our? <coughs> Who's our most able-bodied person? I should point out, if you look at the screen, Martha, you, you, I mean, you're, you're minutes away from the airport, right? I mean, Pete, you, yeah, I, I just... Yeah, so um, in, in the Roll20 chat, I just, put, um, I just put a link to Google Maps, right? So feel free, but, like, I mean, you could walk from side to side in, like... You know, from top to bottom, where Jenny is to get to where Pete is, is probably 20 minutes. Small place, What's really Pete? small place. What's Pete? Say it again. What's Pete? Oh, if you look at the screen where, I'm, where we've got the map up at the moment. So Pete's here. Pete Alphas, that's, uh, that's Gary at the moment, or Zero. The oh, other Zero. Is, what he is he? Oh, Pete. As in, who is he? Well, hold on a second. So let's go back to what we were doing. So, Martha, what before we get back to the plane, what do people know about you? Uh, I'm mayor. I'm quite affable. I run a vineyard. I am I'm very pleasant to everybody and can maneuver around um, conversations about most things, really, uh, which when everything felt crap. Actually, before everything felt crap, I was sort of becoming mayor because the previous mayor was retiring. Uh, and because I'm approachable and I'm good at decision making, so, um, and I have all the wine, so that makes me very popular. Um, I became a. You've, um, uh, you've, uh, uh, and thank you for that, by the way, John, kind of putting that into context. If, if you didn't see it, John just said, walking from the top part of the island, uh, to the airport, like walking from this corner to the airport, he's pinging it for us. Thank you there in roll 20. Walking there's about an hour, right? So let's assume everyone has a bike if they want to have a bike. And they, John, could you, would you mind switching that on Google Maps to uh, the bike just to give us an idea of how long it would take to get there in that sense? So it's so about eight miles in total, 10 miles in total. All right. 
Yeah. Yeah. Full on. Uh, All right. So, hey, so let's go to Pete. So, Pete, w w what are you doing and what would other people know about you? All right. Uh, so, I guess the island's a little bigger than I, th I thought. Um, I was going to say I was taking my daily walk around the island. Figure that would be kind of neat to do, you know, walk the perimeter. But, uh, you know, maybe if that's like three hours, I can do that in a day. Beautiful. So you're on your walk around. This is a beautiful yeah. island, right? If you Google yeah. it, there's a, there's a ton to see there, right? So there's uh, down in the bottom left, there's a, a fish reserve down here. And then over here, I forget what this is, but this is a, a bird observatory, right? So it really is like a wonderfully, like a beautiful like place to be, right? And there's a, a, a light, a lighthouse right up in that corner. So there's a lot of areas you wouldn't have to do a walk of the whole. I mean, you absolutely could, but there's a lot of areas that you could just wander to to kind of relieve the boredom and just kind of like be one with nature. Well, I thought it'd be kind of neat, like that'd be my thing, like just to walk the uh, the Beautiful. perimeter of the island, just walk. You know, I like the the ocean, I like the waves, I like the sound of it all, and I, you know, and I'm walking my dog Noodles, my King Charles Spaniel, what, what, years old. What is it? What's the dog's name? Noodles. Oh, how funny! So that's the we have a cat called Noodles. So like, I, I, <laughs> yeah. I, I wait. You have a dog. Yep, I have a dog, and somehow he he managed to survive the the whole ordeal. He's he's okay. He's good. It was it. A, you're an ex policeman. Was it was it, is it a canine unit that's highly trained? No, or, no, no. He's, the, he's okay. a King Charles Spaniel. He's a lap dog. Okay. All right. All right. Perfect. Okay. Ready. Okay. So all right. Perfect. Thank you. Um, this this may cause some tension with other people in the uh, in the island, though. No. Well, you know, I I found the source of the tension, and I I broke their legs. Oh, I like that. Okay, yeah, that was probably the easiest way to go about it, truly. I think Martha would have rounded up anybody that had dogs and stuff, and we would have had that out at the time, and she would have said, okay, well, as long as we keep ourselves isolated and the dog can't catch, we... but that means we can't have anyone new on the island. Yeah, and that's kind of been the plan all along, right? So you you closed it down because again, like you you just didn't want anyone coming in, right? You just didn't, you, yeah. You wanted to kind of control the input to the island. But that means he can keep his dog as well because you're in charge. There's no <laughs> new incoming stuff. Well, you're in charge, so yeah. I mean, I mean, genuinely, right? You can do what you want. Um, it's the benefits of being the boss, right? So, um, <clears throat> all right, beautiful. So um pete what would people know about you apart from the fact that you like to walk the island every day uh you know i'm a nice guy uh i like to whittle you know i like to take you know wood carvings and whittle them up uh you know i i don't warm up to new people but i, I guess i haven't been any new people in a while so uh i guess that hasn't been observed in a while but if there were um i probably don't warm up to them too well uh i don't back down from uh confrontation and uh i'm pretty quiet about things i don't uh go around talking about myself uh, I, I keep to myself for the most part but you know i'm there to help and always always there to lend a hand so it, it, it's well known that you were a policeman previously how much do people how much do you talk about what you did or and i i, I don't think i even wrote it on the backstory i don't know that there's oh, much I detail don't talk about it at all is that because you hate it or because you just want to leave it behind you? Why, why is it that you don't talk about it? Uh, yeah, I, I just I don't like the, the memories from it all. Fair comment. All right, beautiful. Thank you. Um, so let, let's go over to, uh, to Jenny. Uh, Jenny, you're, you're in your house. Uh, why don't you tell us uh, what you were doing when you heard the plane sounds and what people might know about you? Um, well, um, yeah, I, w I was... Uh former vet and um i'm really skilled at your know, anal expression for animals <laughs> <Aren't we laughs> <But all>? citizens <laughs> on the island aren't really too keen on it but um i do my best to try and help out uh, medically and since we're all isolated i'm trying my best to i guess uh come up with medicines too like natural to try and add to what we have uh, you know like a uh, holistic medicines like plants and stuff and I, I'm trying to make tinctures and stuff like that too. To to, it's part of my pharmacology background. Growing and, some of that that tree that makes the aspirin. Yes, <laughs> which is willow, salicylic acid. And that, that's See? that's right. <laughs> I knew you would know it. Yes. 
So yeah, and, and that's what I do. So mainly I, I do a lot of foraging and trying to find things that could that we that could be used medicinally. Beautiful. Thank you. Um and did you you, you kind of gave a breakdown of your character? Thank you so much. So lastly, um let's go over to Deputy Doug that that was busy working on his uh car. So I think we already know what you were doing, but maybe maybe you got some something more specific that you were working on. But why don't you tell us about yourself, Doug? Well, that's working great so far. <laughs> Good start. <laughs> the plane has a bomb. Beautiful. Sorry, I was on mute there. So beautiful. Thank you all for that. So, um, so I, I, with the exception of Doug, who's banging away on his equipment, is it fair? Is it fair to say that you all either come out to look for the plane, or in peace case, you, you're kind of looking up the sky, looking for it while you're on your your walk, presumably? Yeah, it's it's <laughs> curious. I guess that doesn't happen every day, right? Yeah, no, it hasn't happened for at least two years, right? It's one of those foreign sounds, like where where you you listen to it and you're like, oh, I kind of remember that. It's an airplane. I'd forgotten all about and it. They were high up, right? They weren't coming in for a landing, were they? No, no. I mean, so far, <clears throat> you have all tried and spotted it. So uh, why don't you all make a perception check? Um, yeah, so, um, wait, Doug, now you're out of your house. Hey, Jenny, can you make a, a apparently, Jenny, can you make, that sound was just too much to ignore. Uh, Jenny, can you make a roll for us? A roll? Yeah, perception. Oh, I, I already did. Oh, did you see in the yeah. list? I was number oh one. Oh my gosh, you were the first one. Like I saw Pete's come up. I assumed he was the first. <laughs> Snuck yeah. in. So as you, as you, I mean, yeah, like, I mean, you're able to see it, right? And you, you're, you're able to hear it and you see uh, through the clouds, right? Because it's a beautiful day. You, you finally see a plane, right? And it doesn't seem to be coming into land, but it, it, it's circling around the island, right? So it's not passing overhead completely. You, you do get the sense that it's uh, it, it, it's kind of like coming around the island, maybe kind of like viewing what's going on or, or like, you know, doing a reconnaissance or whatever you call it. Pete, stop sticking the bees up to the plane. <laughs> do you, do you, Doug, do you have like a flare gun that you could fire at the plane as a form of self-defense if it comes close enough? <laughs> He's saving it for the shark. Yeah, <laughs> for the shark. I love it. So the the plane circles for a little bit, um, like a couple of minutes, right? It kind of it comes close and it does like a pretty good circle of the island, but then it flies off, right? And it's heading south, right? So it's heading back towards the US. You're not sure if that's the direction it came from because when you identified it, it started to do its circle of the island, but it's, it's heading south back towards the US. Those damn yanks. <laughs> Call me Snake. It's a goal fire. Um, sorry, Matt, what were you saying? I just called you Snake, sorry. Oh, thank you, thank you. Um, I, I hope it was with love. Um, all right, beautiful. So that evening, um, you're all kind of left to, to wonder, you know, what, what this could mean. So um, that evening, let me switch scenes and hopefully you can see that. So um, there's so again, like like the, the the island has kind of like got some form of uh, kind of like you know society or kind of like knitted itself back together. So 
Today happens to be the birthday. Uh, like the 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 on the map. If you look at the screen that I'm still sharing, um, there's a oh, excuse me, the dog and goat, right? Which is a bar. So the owners mm -hmm. of that, which is Alex and Alexis, like a husband and wife, they had nowhere else to go, right? So this has remained like a really kind of like a center, right? They still open up every evening. They trade uh, for like goods and services, right? So they've still got a kitchen. Uh, they've still got like a bunch of like supplies of gas. So they're kind of frugal with how they use it. But they, you know, lots of evenings they'll have kind of like people like this evening, they're having kind of an event to celebrate Alexis's birthday, or Alexis's birthday, I should say. So, uh, you know, Alex, the husband, is throwing a party. Everyone is, is invited. Most people are bringing something. Uh, he told everyone to turn up at sundown. Uh, people are working in the kitchen to produce food. So, again, people have brought everything. And, and again, almost the whole town is there. So uh, unless you guys have a reason why you wouldn't go, you, you're, you're all in there and you're, you're all sitting around the bar. So I'm not sure if you can confirm you can see the screen. You guys are all sitting around the bar at the moment. Martha, you, you, you should be more amicable and get up with people. But, but do you all see where you are? Beautiful. So um, Alex is talking to everyone, right? And he's a little bit drunk on the wine that he buys from Martha, right? And so he, he's talking to everyone and, and asking you all, solid snake. Yeah. So um, mm -hmm. first of all, like, like, help me understand. So um, did you bring anything this evening? Like, what did you bring? Did you bring supplies, food, booze, a gift, like some patchwork? Did you read her fortune? What, what have you guys uh, doing this evening as you've come in and sat around the bar? How are you helping celebrate her birthday? I brought the uh, red solo cups. Oh, very nice. A hidden supply. Very nice. I Doug, I, I, uh, you actually brought a, a couple of portable generators, right? That you've run from the windmills, right? So it's how they're powering this evening, right? So you've managed to hook it up. So you may be the only person, as you started talking, I was like, I know what you would have done. You may be the only person that didn't need, like they, they're giving you free drinks all evening. You're not having to trade or barter for anything or make any promises. They're just super glad and people keep cheering you on this evening as Deputy Doug has given light to the bar this evening. So you're kind of like the hero of the piece. Oh, you're such a loving soul. Um, so, all right. So, uh, Jenny and Martha, what, what what did you both bring this evening? And uh, uh, yeah, like like, what was your contribution to the night's festivities? I imagine Martha's <laughs> widespread uh, book reading, <laughs> so she would bring a book that was possibly unique and would be a nice gift oh that, they're very nice a book of poetry or, or, or how to grow the kind of mushrooms that it looks like sven's after in in chat <laughs> possibly not the mushrooms possibly not the mushrooms so um jenny um uh, 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 hot tamales could be your answer to this but do you have you uh, or maybe it's uh Something, some kind of uh, medicinal recipe or, or helper for Alexis who has a little bit of rheumatoid arthritis. Yes, that sounds good. I made a, um, a, a balm out of um, wild herbs that's really good for arthritis. <laughs> So um, Alexis is super, not as grateful as they are to Doug, by the way, but she's super grateful, right? So it, it's, 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 this is the most thriving evening, right? You're all kind of like having a lot of fun and this is... Uh, the, the, you know, you've had other celebrations for like Christmas and so on and done different things, but this feels really good, right? I mean, this is like the most like festive and like the happiest you've seen people and there's a ton of people there. And again, like everyone's really celebrating. So it has a very good vibe to the evening. So again, Alex is getting a little bit drunk, right? And he keeps asking people, like all he wants to talk about is the plane, right? And kind of what that meant and like, wow, isn't this kind of crazy? Like the first time we've had that sound. So can you all take a minute and fill me in on uh, your feelings on the plane? Like, what are you saying in, as part of this conversation? Are you guys excited about it? Like, you 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 anxious about it? Like, how do you feel about the possibility of other people connecting with the island? Maybe. It
yeah, same here. We don't have very much supplies. I'm worried that we're going to be, you know, um, like in, kind of like looked over and taken, have stuff taken from us. But that's just me. <laughs> I'm going to take a optimistic view. I'm going to think that maybe it means civilization is coming back. And if they're, uh, they've got planes, they probably have all the resources they need. Alexis claps her hands and points at Jenny and says, what if they come and bring us chocolate? Would that be such a terrible thing? Because you guys haven't had chocolate in more than a year. You haven't had anything with sugar in more than a year. So she's kind of excited, like, again, a little bit tipsy, but she's kind of excited by the idea. Well, if they're bringing chocolate, then yes, I, I, that's absolutely okay. <laughs> <laughs> Martha is kind of the elder statesman uh, or stateswoman, I should say, of the uh, the village. What's your perspective? Um, I think I would like to take <coughs> uh, Jenny aside and just ask her what her thoughts were in terms of if people did come to the island. Uh, even or uh, even small individuals, what that might mean in terms of the distemper. I guess because two years of not talking about any of that and not seeing anyone else, we kind of let things go a little. Jenny, when... conscious conscious that Pete, for example, has a dog that might go rabid overnight. When people turn up and then bring them to step back, you know. So Jenny, let's if you're back from your chocolate run, uh <laughs> <let's>, done yet. <laughs> oh, okay. Let's have you um if you alt and double click on the Jenny token, it'll bring up your character sheet. So if you look on your character sheet, you'll find first aid surgery pharmacology. So um, make a make a uh, make make a pharmacology or a first aid role. It's your better skill. Do you see that? Yeah, I'm trying to find the pharmacology. It's under there medicine. It there you go. There you go. Okay. Wow. <laughs> oh wow! Someone just Great. ate the poison mushroom. <laughs> I swear this oh, is no. the safe one. This is the you edible okay? one. <laughs> So that you deliver melts away. <laughs> it, it was actually a, a moment of um, of low insight, right? So <laughs> it, it means that because you got a double one, if you get a double one or a double six, not only do you get an insight dice, but you also get um, like something either went so horribly wrong or something went so astoundingly well that you learned from it, right? So that moment of low insight, all, all it really <laughs> indicates. Is that you have no data, right? You're you're kind of like yeah, like no one knew no one knew anything, right? When we closed off, it was just after the first outbreak. TVs went off like pretty soon after that, right? More than two years ago, they went off. I think in the August, right? First infections in the marsh. There's no more TVs. There's no word from the outside. Jenny just throws her hands up. She's got no idea, simply because again, like she has zero data to base it on. So she looks over at Pete's dog and she's like, the you know. First thing we might know is uh, Jenny is an is a vet, so she'll know, right? So she yeah. says to you with the certainty, like if I, you know, I know Pete's dog. What's your dog's name? Noodles. So she yeah. knows noodles really well because it's one of the few pets left on the island. So she gives it like you know personal treatment and care. So uh, she she'll know straight away. But she says to Martha, that might be the only early warning system that we have is if I see that dog losing his mind. Yeah, old yellow. <laughs> Not sure how uh, he'll That's feel about him uh, about the dog being uh, a canary, but uh, okay. Well, that's a start, I guess. I know Jenny's mind. That's exactly something she would say. So, um, Alexis, like the, you know, she she continues to just like talk about like as the evening goes on. 
like it's a, it's, it's a lovely party and it starts to wind down and you'll kind of drift away. But like the evening's all been, most of the talk has been about like the old days, right? When Alexis has been talking to people, she's like, so if you could have three wishes as to what people would bring, what, what would they bring, right? So everyone's kind of like, you know, Jenny says antibiotics because it means it would be a little bit easier. And like everyone's got a different idea for what they would bring. <clears throat> Excuse me. But uh, Alexis keeps the mood light, right? Because it is her birthday after all, right? So she kind of keeps the mood light and, and upbeat, uh, thinking about what could be and the possibilities of people coming in. Anyone got anything they do before the evening's out in the in the bar? Like, you know, any conversations? Oh, <laughs> chocolate for real now. Enjoy. Um, anyone got any conversations they want to have or anything they would want to do before we fade to black on the evening? Uh -huh. Oh, there's a pool table at the bottom. Hold on here. Yeah, I see something I want to do. I'm going to see somebody's up for a little nine ball. A little, a little snooker. That would be, uh, the good news is this bar is like a popular location for people. So that would be a regular event. So even though you're excited about it now, this would be one of those like few touch points of, uh, you know, really the, the dog and goat has become the kind of like the touch point of humanity, right? This is the best evening anyone's had there for a while, but this is like the most common congregating place just because Jenny, uh, sorry, uh, Alex and Alexis kept it open after the, uh, the pandemic. So I think I think we're gonna fade a pack black with Pete being a bit of a pool shark and losing his first game so he can gamble on something with somebody else there and get something for himself. So Pete, feel feel free to stick something in your inventory that you managed to uh cheat someone out of. Uh pick something I cheated somebody out of? Yeah, like like a pair of binoculars or something you goose someone out of because like you 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 pool sharked them. That's where the scene ended, right. like it faded yeah, to a black. Flashlight. There you go. Flashlight off of them. There you go. Put it in your inventory. Enjoy. Right. Use it in good health. All right. So the the next day, right? So uh, you're all kind of like thinking about it, right? But it's it's next day, later in the afternoon. What what have you guys been up to during the day? Just just uh, kind of like help me out or help set the scene. What, what what have you guys been up to? And did any of you wake up with a hangover? Did any of you drink to excess last night? Not for Martha. I had a couple, but I had to keep my wits about me for the game. <laughs> Funny. Um, all right. So um, just responding to Odd in the uh, in the chat and letting him know that you brought a dog with you to this evening session. All right. So um, what, what are you what, what are you guys up to, Martha? What are you up to, Jenny, Doug, uh, P? What what are you all doing today? Is Pete considered a resident, like, police force, or or is he turned his back on all of that and somebody else would be that in the community? The original... Uh, sorry, go on. Sorry. No, no, please. Say, I, I'm retired, but I imagine if there had been a need for a cop at any moment, which I imagine maybe in this whole time there wouldn't have been, you know, with the population so low. Really? Uh, maybe I don't know. Uh, may maybe a domestic problem. So you you've you've certainly helped keep the peace, right? So uh, to to your point, right? There haven't really been uh any incidents of violence right people that say they're like I say mostly older there's been some arguments right but pete the original whoever was the uh the policeman he was one of the people that left just before martha closed down the ports right so um pete really has become kind of the de facto voice of the authority you could say um in the in the town but there really hasn't been a need for any for, for cops there really hasn't but i it imagine it <laughs> I would agree with that. But I imagine if there's a, if there is an issue, I'm probably the guy they call first. If there is somebody to call. 
It's a little bit like, I don't know if any of you have seen uh, Sea of Love with Al Pacino, but he does this whole scene where he's kind of like, oh, everyone hates the police until you get robbed, and then we're everybody's daddy. So I think that's that's kind of like Pete's attitude here, right? Like, no one wants the cops until you need a cop, and then we're everybody's daddy. No, I'm just Noodle's daddy. Come here. Give, uh, give you're on. retired. You left it all behind you, except your gun and your badge. Um... All right, so so Pete, are you out? What did you? Well, sorry, Pete, what did you say you were doing? Were you out on your walk, or what are you up to? Sure, I can I can do my walk. Beautiful. Why not, Doug? What what, what are you up to? Beautiful. So, uh, Martha, what, what what have you been up to? I can't hear Doug because I'm out wine tasting. Just <laughs> <laughs> sorry, can't hear you. You're just <laughs> snozzling you grapes down. Not here. <laughs> um, I think uh, Martha will always, if she's doing nothing, just be out on the deck if the climate is fine, um, and just with a um, a glass of wine and a book in hand, just looking over and watching the grapes grow. But given this has kicked off, um, she kind of wants to... <coughs> I, I feel like Martha would have had a plan for this already. She seems kind of organized and sort of nuanced for this sort of stuff. So if anyone was coming to the island, we would have a plan for that stuff. But said we... We organized the getting people off, so yep. I assume she would have a plan for um, if anyone wanted to get on. The The difference with it would be we wouldn't be expecting it to come by plane. We would expect it to come by, well, we would have expected it to come by boat. Yeah. Well, I think we'd be trying to be ready for those policies. What what would that look like? So, what would you do? Um, the, the airport's like. I mean, it, actually, you can Google it, but let me see if I can zoom in. I mean, the airport's it's just a rinky dink little airport, right? It's a kind of a single runway. If you can still see my screen, I'm not sure the map's going to zoom in much better or give much more clarity. Single runway, a couple of buildings at the front, like really not much to it. So. Your only real bet would be for if you were trying to sabotage and stop people from landing, you'd have to do something to the runway. That's the only way to, or try and shoot the plane down, or do something else. But that that would be your only real option. I imagine we could. You know, so I, I would leave that up to the group, right? I mean, there's no real authority, right? There's a lot of goodwill towards Martha because she really did do a great job of leading throughout the kind of the whole like affair, right? And kind of, you know, people kind of credit her with the fact that everyone's still alive and the whole world seems to have died. But I don't know that it's Queen Martha's Island, right? I think the um, if there is, I mean, you'd all have to decide how you'd react to being told what to do, you know? yeah yeah like i mean you're you're all voices of authority right i mean like everyone that lives on the island has a voice obviously but you're all people that have done things that kind of like you know again like a, a vet come like makeshift doctor or a pl previously a policeman a fire chief someone that ran a successful business was previously deputy mayor someone that runs a vineyard and like so you're all people that have garnered respect but i think it is much more the kind of cabinet approach i don't know that she's barking orders at people I think she's too smart. Q, 
Given the place is so small, we'd kind of know where anyone was showing up, yeah? Yes, 100%. Is there a uh, is there a, some sort of um, lighthouse or something that raises you above the horizon so you can see in both directions? There is, there is. If you uh, Again, if you look <laughs> at my screen in the top, uh, very northeast corner of the building, there is a lighthouse. It's actually, uh, you, you can see a long way from it, but again, it's it's right at the one end of the, uh, the island. And although you can see everything, it is elevated, nice, but it's right. kind of pointed out. Now, I should also point out, like, down to the municipal building and even at the airport itself the airport does have like a little uh, airport control tower right so if you're looking to get elevation to see i mean that's probably the closest place because again looking at the map your house and the airport are just minutes away from each other so that would be the closest place for you to get to to get some kind of elevation because it's th it's at least as big as the lighthouse if not like two to three stories high you know I don't think Martha would be doing that. I think Martha would have someone in, like the place in general, the rule would be that someone has to, you know, be watching out. It would be a standardized sort of thing and everyone takes turns doing it. So I, I would put that to the rest of the group, right? It's been two years. Like, are you, and I'm okay if you are, I'm not trying to talk you out of it, but I don't want this to be Queen Martha again. This is more like President Martha. It's two years on. Do you think that everyone would have kept up that vigilance and there'd still be a daily watch out? And I I'm okay that would, by the way. I don't think that would happen, but now we're to, holy shit, someone's actually around. I think we would reinitiate it, no? Oh, reactivate yeah. the protocols from previous. Yeah, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Exactly. Well, did we want to block up the runway? Are you there, Pete? Like, I, I don't mean that yeah, facetiously, did, did but you it, hear me? yeah, no, but I mean, did you wander over? Have you wandered over to Martha's or was this part of the discussion last night? Are you, are you there with uh, Doug while she's discussing this was really my question. Oh, oh, I thought, I thought everybody was here talking. No, like that's why I was asking what everyone's oh, okay. doing. Doug kind of wandered down. I asked earlier if you, oh, and, hey man, if you if you've wandered over there, like I have had it, right? I mean, maybe you, Doug, and Martha agreed to meet at her house the next day. Like I have had it. Like I, I, I'm not saying you're not there. Oh, we agree to meet up every night. I think Doug came to my place, didn't it? Oh, you say that with some certainty. Like that's a regular thing. Huh, okay. Yeah. Uh, people know where I am because there's a fucking great vineyard. There. You're kind of the center of the town in some ways, right? Yeah. I mean, the Duggan goes where people go, but like ge geographically, you're pretty close to being the center of the island, I should say, not the center of the town. All right, so Jenny, what, what are you up to? Apart from getting chocolate, maybe you've got a stash that lasted you a couple of years. Who knows? <laughs> and hopefully it's not like laxative chocolate because that would be a double-edged sword, right? I mean, it wouldn't be all bad, but it wouldn't be all good. All right, Jenny, what... What what are you doing the next day? Well, I just was a. I guess I'm just working on tinctures. Yeah, more tinctures. <laughs> so I was thinking that's a funny sounding word. Yeah, so it you're, is. Yeah. <laughs> you're working on your tinctures. Okay, cool. I, I, I might go back down to Martha see if she has any like uh, green alcohol, maybe because I I, I need more for my tinctures. <laughs> Well, you know, it's funny. You and you and Doug live very close uh, on the island, right? So uh, I, I, you know, m m maybe you know, it, it feels to me like Martha may have said to you all the night before, like to congregate her house. Maybe she even offered up dinner or something along those lines, right? But she feel, you know, it sounds like Martha has the need to to reinstitute uh, some of the practices or protocols from previously or previous. So, so it kind of makes sense that all the play. If you want, it kind of makes sense that you're all kind of congregating at Martha's for whatever reason. Is that is that fair to say? Sure. Yeah. Martha, have you, have you put somebody up in the control tower already, or is that one of the things that you're looking to discuss? <coughs> I think it would reinitiate as soon as anything big happened. And yesterday was a big enough thing if everyone was talking about it that we'd stick someone else up. Okay. Up there straight away. Okay. So, um, 
<clears throat> the guy that's up there at the moment um, has been, he's actually still on the Roll20 screen. It's, let's just say it's the character. If you look at the very south of the island, the character that I'm pinging at the Myris, Cyrus, uh, who, who I think the um, Zero called the Morgan Freeman type character. It looks that way, right? So <laughs> Cyrus is on duty at the moment. <laughs> Uh, and Cyrus, super uh, interesting guy, right? So he was previously uh, a tech mogul who retired here, um, like an early retirement. He's been writing books. He wants to be kind of the next John Grisham. So he's been writing books and he's been a tour guide when the summer. So he's been here a few years and is also very, very well respected in the island, right? So you guys are at Martha's and you're discussing. And Martha, are you making kind of like lunch? It's early afternoon, kind of like mid-afternoon. Are you making kind of lunch or dinner for people or is this just like a strictly business meeting? Yeah, it'd be a sort of lunch, I think. Uh, we've got a, the vineyard would have a taste testing thing. So it'd be a sort of nice place to meet and kind of swanky. And it'd be a bit run down now, but at the same time, kind of family and nice. Hey, Martha, let's have you make a um, a farming roll. Any Simon? Uh, uh, yeah, plus one because the, the town small library was available to you. So... Yeah, you have a uh, roll, uh, roll two d three. So someone that was leaving the town um, had uh, someone that evacuated from the island, I should say, had some cows, right? So you've converted an area of your uh, fairly extensive farmland into kind of a cow's grazing area. So you're able to still, you're producing cheese and like you can get some like cow's milk and so on. So you're, you're you know, that's another, um, as you're serving things up to them, you've actually got some fresh cheese to, to offer to them. So you can make it kind of like uh, very congenial, I think was the word you used. Yep. All right. So as you guys are gathering and talking about the, um, uh, the, the preparations or the things that you would need to do, you, you, you hear the plane again, right? So uh, you hear off in the distance and someone's talking and somebody else shushes somebody. Um, but but within seconds, you'll realize it's that sound again. And just as you realize it's, uh, it's the planes coming back, uh, the walkie-talkie uh, that you've got, Martha, comes to life. And it's Cyrus who's up in the airport. And he says, uh, hey, I'm up in the tower. Uh, you, you can probably all hear the plane, but I think it's coming into land again. Oh, it's coming into land, I should say. Does he say it in a Morgan Freeman voice? He does say it in a very, <laughs> it sounds almost like it's the voice of God in some respects, right? The way he says it to you is so fucking smooth. It's like drinking caramel, right? So in your ear. So yes, he says that. And he says like, Martha, you should probably get over here if, if, if I'm right, right? So, so the plane is still circling overhead. Cyrus may or may not be right, but as you come out of your house, Martha and company, um, you do see the plane and you can hear it very clearly. The life of a plane transcends time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what are you guys doing? Uh, I'm going to... Yeah, I got to go check it out. Yeah, I guess we're, I'm going on there too. Yeah, so you, you, you may have brought like ratchets or whatever. So you'd have, uh, I think it's makeshift. I don't think it's actually in the rules, but it's in the most current. I don't think it's programmed in. You'd have a makeshift club. All right. So as you head over there, right, it's kind of a commotion, right? I mean, you see a bunch of different people heading to the airport. There's a lot of people on bikes, which is becoming increasingly common. There's next, there's maybe a couple of horses on the island, right? But like most people are using bikes to get around. So you're seeing like a bunch of people that are converging on the on the airport because it looks more and more like the plane is coming into land. So Martha, you have a, a twinge of regret that you hadn't acted on your plan to uh, to blockade the, uh, the the uh, the the runways, right? But if you can see now uh, in roll twenty, you should be able to see the airport, right? So you, you're there. Oh wow! 
<clears throat> yeah, the the plane doesn't quite look like that, but I I, I, I came in on a B two bomber, huh? No, I, I this was all a very short notice. I ran out of time putting this all together, so I need to find a more appropriate, but yeah, heavy metal. I find, need to find a more appropriate picture before I run this again. So you guys are there, right? And you know, you because you, you were so close, right? You're some of the first people there. Cyrus is up in the tower. Uh, let's put him off over here. And you can see it as you're coming, uh, as you're kind of like all approaching, uh, it, the plane is obviously coming into land, right? And so um, I don't know. I mean, is there something you would you try and do something to stop it when it looks like it's coming into land, or do you think you would let the plane land? So what kind of describe the plane? What is it big? Is it like how many people? Does no, it look like it's, it's uh, let me let me bring it up in the window so you can see it. Um, it, it, it it's it's it looks very close to this. So if you look on the screen that I've been okay. sharing, so like a Cessna, right? I mean, it looks like a small plane. Whether it's this or like something a little bit bigger, it, 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 so it's probably sorry, at most like four people. Yeah, yeah. All right. We, I think we should let them land. Yeah, I mean, if it really was a B-2 bomber, I'd be a lot more afraid. <laughs> yeah, I need to find again a more appropriate before I run this again. I should also say... This is the first time I've run this, but um, I've done a couple of interviews, uh, and three of the streamers that I've done interviews with are going to do a playtest and stream this out while they're playtesting. So I, this is I'm, I'm playtesting this with you, a known friendly audience, so I can tidy it up and then run it for those guys as well. So, um, so again, I'll find a uh, get rid of this B fifty two when appropriate. All right, so. Um, the plane's coming into land, right? So uh, th there's a bunch of people watching. Again, there's probably like 15 other people. There's these people you can see here and a bunch more people are turning up. And the plane comes in and it lands, but it's very heavy, right? And so people wince, right? And there's like people audible, audibly groan, right, when it lands because it feels like it's going to pop a tire, right? So it like bounces a couple of times, but then it comes to a stop, right? And so it pulls up very, uh, you know, where it is now, kind of like not close to you guys. And it was never a threat when it was coming in, but it does pull up uh, to, to where it is, and uh, somebody kind of climbs—not kind of—somebody climbs out, right? So this fella, if you can see him on the roll twenty, um, he, he, he climbs out, right? And uh, it, it's uh, you know he, he comes out and he's got his hands up almost comically, right? So he comes out and he's smiling at you. He walks forward. He, he's walking very slowly. Uh, towards you um, he, he has a gun on his hip but his hands are up in the air and he's smiling at you and he's not making any hostile gestures he's just trying to get within voice range of you and the plane's all powered down right he's just trying to get within you know talking or shouting range so he can have a conversation with you so he doesn't seem to be making any threatening gestures but he gets to about here and he stops and he shouts hello can you guys hear me So um, he, he, he's smiling, right? So um, he, he says to you, um, he, he thanks you for the warm welcome, right? And he says, I'm Captain John Matthews of the U.S. Regulated Militia. Uh, and he says, uh, I don't know if it's you, but I'd be very grateful if one of you would take me to your leader. And he's kind of like smiling while he says it. And again, being very, very non-threatening. And, you know, he's trying to be, if anything, he's being very charming. <clears throat> he points to the plane behind you and like i mean there, there's enough light still right i mean it's not it's not dark right so there's enough light that you can see that there's nobody else in the plane he says no no i'm all on my own he said i'm happy to tell you what i'm doing he said i'm i, I don't have any secrets but right now I, I'm part of what we call Survivor Squad. So this is my plane, and uh, you know I'm looking for survivors to reconnect them. And uh, he asks again, like I, he looks at you, Doug. Who and Doug? I think it was you that asked the question. But he says, Doug, like, or it doesn't know your name. But he looks at you and says, are, are, are you the uh, are you the leader here? Yeah. 
so he, 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 he says, do you mind if I come over? Rather than shouting at you, can I, can I approach? So he heads on over here, um, he, 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 and again, he's got his hands up the whole time, right? And he's really not looking very threatening. So he walks over to you, and he, he, he stops short of um, holding out his hands, right? But he says, again, um, I, I'm, I'm Captain John Matthews. Um, uh, you know, again, references that he's part of the, um, the, the survivor squad, right? The U.S. regulated militia. And he says, well, look, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm here for a reason. Uh, is there somewhere we can go that's, uh, private? You can bring anybody you want. And you said the, you, you know, whatever you just said to him, you alluded that you're part of a leadership team. He said, I don't really care who comes, but, uh, I, I need to talk to whoever's in charge. Can we go somewhere a little bit more private than this open airway? Sorry, I had something over it. Ping it again. You cracked. Yep. Uh, is that the tower? Yes. You say? Uh, I, I, I come over. I say, how about uh, you, uh, you take them along with uh, Martha and uh, go show them some of the island? Martha or Jenny? I'm sure John would love to see it. He he looks at you and he smiles. He looks at Pete when he says that he says, Where, wherever you're taking me, is there any food there? Because I, I, I don't have any supplies and it's it's been a long day. I, I would love it if you guys had something to eat. I would be forever grateful if you guys had something to eat, he says. Oh, was Martha gone? Hey, talking about noodles, or like, I just like that picture of noodles. Uh, is noodles <laughs> with you? Uh, yeah, I imagine he's with me everywhere. So um, he he has so this guy has uh, a kind of an adverse reaction, right? If your dog's coming over, he looks as you're approaching, and he looks at the dog, and he said, uh, and and for the first time, he looks aggressive, right? His hand goes almost reflexively to the gun on his uh, on his waist. He doesn't unholster it, but he does put his hand up and says, "Please keep that dog away from me." Well, noodles don't hurt nobody. You know, um, he, he's, he's, he's not won over, right? And it's the first time he stopped smiling, right? He's been super friendly and super polite at everything. Um, but now he's kind of like, yeah, like, yeah, you know, a lot of people said that. And I don't know if you know how many people ultimately died, but, like, I, I, I just, if you guys have got dogs on the island, like, just keep them away from me. And so he looks at you, Doug, and he's like, I don't know if that guy's one of your leadership team, but, like, wherever we go, can we not have that dog with us? He he re he looks down right. He realizes like as you come up and you're a little bit threatening. He realizes that his hands on his gun and he puts his hand very up slowly in the air and he says he smiles again. He was like that was an instant reaction. He said uh, you know best guesstimate is that like ninety percent of humanity's gone and it's gone because of dogs. I haven't seen a dog in more than two years. And he said like I'll take your word that that dog's not infected. And he looks around. And he says I guess otherwise you wouldn't be here. He said, but you can understand my reluctance. But his hand's nowhere near his gun. And again, he's got a very calm demeanor about himself because he's not here. It, it doesn't seem like he's here looking for trouble.
Is uh, is Martha back? Yeah, Martha sniffs the air and says, oh, I haven't smelled that smell in quite a while. Testosterone. You guys yeah, put away, put away the guns, and uh, let's all go sit down, have a nice little talk. So um, he, he looks at you and he says, he smiles at you and he says, um, "I'm guessing that you're part of this leadership team as well." Ah, if you can call it that, sure I am. Let's let's go talk. He says, well, I, I appreciate it when cool heads prevail. Um, Doug has suggested going to your house, Martha. Uh, he was hungry. I'm not sure if you hear what he was saying there, but he said, like, wherever we go, is there any food? So you okay with going to your house? Uh, how much are we going to uncover by going to my place? Like, I mean, I don't want to be giving too much away. Um, yeah. I mean, there's a number of places you could go, right? I mean, it, it, it it's... Um, you could go back to the bar. You could go uh, to an empty house. You could go to your house, Martha. You could like find there's there's probably offices and warehouses in here. Uh, you weren't here, but Pete wanted to keep him away from the control tower where Cyrus is. So like so, like feel free to suggest a location where you'd go. Um, but but again, like I mean, what, what would you be showing him if he sees your house? I think we'd just go to the um, open park again where we have the wine testing. So. Um, so we're not showing much. He just knows we've got a vineyard. And I'll say over the radio quite specifically um, to... Cyrus? Uh, oh, yeah, now. Cyrus. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Cyrus to... Y'all keep a watch out now. You hear? And did you say you were taking... And he says he, he, um, he doesn't have a southern accent because he's from uh, Seattle originally. So he, he, he kind of like, he's like, he says it almost like jokingly back to it. You hear, right? So he, he acknowledges what you said. And where did you say you were going, Martha? To like the vineyard, but not to your house. Is that right? Uh, I think vineyard open house, so the wine tasting place, because that would be public area anyway and wouldn't be showing much. Yeah, so... Um... You, you may, if you look at Roll20, you may recognize this map from uh, Chase. No, There's a girl running away from it. I know. Shut up. It's all beautifully repurposed, right? So this is uh, Martha's Vineyard, Star right? Wars and already. so uh, this is the tasting area, right, where people stick around. There's like a, a seating area where they have more guests. That there's like, let's forget all the beds, right? There's no cannibals here, right? But everyone's, uh, th this is whatever it is. But this is a... Uh, her tasting area come like storage area, come farm area, come distillery, whatever you'd want to call it. So you're not giving a lot away here. Cool. All right. It'll be uh, nice and courteous and give them a sit down. All right. So All right. Uh, uh, I, I stay behind, by the way. I want to do some stuff after they're gone. Okay. All right. So Cyrus that isn't here yet. Uh, correct. Let me move it. Got some business. That that will make this guy much more at ease, right? Simply because uh, again, like he he's, he's the the dogs are a little bit weird for him. So, all right. So, um, it's the three of you, and uh, I, I'm guessing you'll just bring Pete up to speed, or maybe you leave a walkie-talkie open and he can listen to it on an earpiece. But uh, right now, you guys are all sitting around, right? So. Um, he, he's kind of validated. Um, he seems like like willing enough to talk. Excuse me. Um, but he, he's validated that the three of you are all part. Of, like you're all trustworthy, right? That you're all part of leadership here, right? So he asks you. He asks Martha. He says, uh, you, "This is a wine tasting area." He said, "Like I'm guessing you're used to hosting uh, uh, guests here. Do, do you mind awfully if I smoke?" And he pulls out a pack of cigarettes and he. He, as he says it, he kind of offers them open around, like if anyone wants one, he can have one. But he's asking you, do you mind if he smokes? Um, well, we're all going to die sometime. <laughs> so he's he's very appreciative, right? And so, um, Martha, he, he, he mentioned earlier, and again, I'm not sure if you're here, but it, it asked. he said he didn't bring any supplies with him, and it's kind of later in the day. Do you have anything? Are you offering anything to him, like a glass of wine and some, you know, cheese and crackers or whatever, your bowl of grapes or whatever? I'm going to offer him some stuff, but it, they're all going to be as if they're rationed. 
So sure. it'll be a glass of something, but a quarter full uh, plate of something, but a quarter full and just say, you know, it's best of times, worst of times, you know. Got to look after um, what little we've got here. So he seems to very much appreciate that. And he says, well, that kind of brings me to my point. So he raises his glass. He has a bite of cheese. And he says, yeah, this feels like luxury. And has a big smoke of his cigarette like he's French. So he 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 kind of rattles off a bunch of stuff to you, right? He says um, he, he's military. He's part of the newly formed uh, U.S. regulated militia. His job is to patrol for survivors and reunite them. They jokingly call him and his teammates the Survivor Squad. Uh, he says that basically the pandemic's now over. There haven't been any recorded deaths in months. He says the eggheads think there's natural immunity at this point, but he says, uh, but then there are no dogs to put that to the test, right? So, uh, you know, he kind of like makes a snide comment almost about noodles um he says that there's a nascent uh, military government that's coalescing in the u.s is based out of virginia first goal is to reunite survivors under one flag next is whole democratic elections he says things are really starting to look up out there he said he saw the island yesterday while he was returning to base with some other survivors, but he had no room, so he decided to come back today. He said that uh, he hadn't intended to land. He was just going to uh, reconnoiter, but he had a fuel leak and was basically forced down. So he says that uh, he's going to need to repair his plane and refuel it before taking off again. And he says, but, you know, his mission is to locate and reunite survivors um, and that the island and the, you know, the fact that there are a bunch of you here I, you haven't told him exactly how many yet, um, because again, he's he's kind of you know giving you his pitch or his story. But he basically says, you, you have an infrastructure and you have a bunch of healthy people here. He said this is too valuable not to pitch into the effort. So he says, you know, and I, you know, I don't. He says all this very friendly, but he says I really care that this island is supposedly Canadian. He said that you know as soon as they reestablish a government, they can lobby for its return. But he says as of right now, this is U.S. soil. So he says, uh, you know, he asks you and he's, he, he's given you all this information and he's, he's done it in a way like he's, he, he thinks you're going to be excited, right? So he's relayed all of this in pretty much one go, right? And he's taken like the whole time he's been eating his cheese and smoking cigarettes and drinking wine. But he's basically relayed like the state of the nation back in the US or the state of the nation off the island. So do you guys have any questions for him or, you know, what's going through your heads? Like over to you. Uh, so what do you want with the island? He 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 smiles and he's like, uh, "This is now part of the uh, the restoration effort, right? This is now part of the U.S. and the rebuilding effort." He said, "You've got natural lands here." He said, "I I flew over a couple of times." He said, "You got farmlands here. It looks like people are working the farmlands." He said, "I saw a couple of like farm animals in a couple of places." He said. You know, this is, this is, you survived, right? The fact that you've been on your own for two years and you're still here. He says, that that's what I'm expecting from you. He says, are you prepared to be saved? He said, like the US, he said, I, I'm representing the US government. I'm here because you're now part of the restoration effort. That's why I'm here. That's what he wants from you. Well, what does that mean? I mean, yeah. He says that um, everyone has to pitch in. He said, uh, you know, um, he said it was a really close call out there with the pandemic. He said, uh, you know, he, again, he says the best estimates are the 90% of people died. He said, like, do the math. That's like 7 billion people gone. He said, like, they, you know, there's no supply chain anymore. He said, there's no nothing anymore. He said, people are pitching in. The government's created a couple of, like, uh, they, they're trying to, uh, serve the citizens again, right? He said that, you know, there's a network of survivors, right? He said that, like, he's pulling people together and, like, him and the rest of his team. He said that, you know, the, the, uh, there are there are areas where people is it, is much better than he's making it sound, right? But he said there are areas that they take people to, right? That there are kind of like you know settlements, right? And like everyone's pitching in and everyone's kind of like rebuilding. He said like basically what you're doing here, but at scale. And he, he, he says, so either you're coming with us and you're going to help us in that effort or we're coming to you and bringing people here to speed up what you're doing on the island and, and you know, like, like hell with the farmlands and take some of this back to other people. He said, like, basically, again, you, you're now, you've been discovered. You're now part of the survivors network. You're expected to pitch in and either go with them or people are going to come to the island. 
Dạ. Correct. There's enough small game. I mean, first of all, like you can fish like all day long, right? A little bit like the other game we played in Astoria. But also there's enough kind of like, if you look at the map, I mean, there's enough kind of Greenland where you can assume there's lots of rabbits running around. And like, again, there's only 70 people on the island. So, you know, there's nothing being made, but you're all doing pretty well, right? And you're not starving like he kind of alludes to some of the others, you know, some of the horrors he's seen and like, you know, you guys seem to be doing pretty well for yourself. It doesn't look like, you know, malnutrition has run rampant through here like we've seen in some of the other survivor camps. I don't know what to say. <laughs> well, thanks to my tinkers. No, <laughs> but no, I'm, I'm, I'm really skeptical. It says, okay, uh, if, if people come here, what, what's going to happen how does this affect us this is we're just a small community he, he says that uh yeah but he goes back again to it's a small community but you guys are obviously doing and he kind of looks up and he says like uh you know i he points at the food in front of him and like the wine and he looks around and there's a fire going he said you you, you wouldn't believe the horrors that i've seen out there he said like you wouldn't believe the horrors that are going on out there right the last two years have been brutal like humanity's gone through the ringer and it's starting to come out on the other side. So he said, look, and it, his mood shifts a little bit with some of these questions, right? He's still very friendly, but he's like, hey, so look, guys, like, is, is how this works. You've been discovered. I'm going to have to call this in on my radio to my superiors. They've got to know where I am. He says, we can do this one of two ways. He says, uh, we can do this the easy way or the hard way, right? The easy way is, you cooperate, right? And you offer up your resources, you open up the, you know, he, he, he's already asked you how many people are on the island. You've kind of like said a couple of dozen, you've been very vague in your answer. But he says to you, hey, this is too big a place with too small a population and you're able to farm this land. He said, if we bring more people here, they'll be able to speed it up and like you'll be able to pitch into the restoration effort so he keeps going back to that right the you know like it, it, it's almost like your duty right it's it's kind of like he doesn't really understand why you're not willing to pitch in he's kind of like this is what people are doing like we've got a government out there the government's you know it's a military government at the moment they're committed to holding elections as soon as possible right and again like that everyone's trying to do what they can so jenny he's talking to you the whole time right and it's again none of this is threatening right but he is just you know kind of going through these uh these reasons really almost by road and it all comes back to he feels this is your duty Well, what if we don't want to be a part of it? It, it looks at Martha and Doug, right? Because you, you're both by, kind of being quiet, right? So he's kind of trying to gauge your reaction and see whether or not you're, you've got the same line of questioning as Jenny. But he says, uh, he, he asks you, and again, he's, he's super friendly, but he, he says to you, wait, what, what did you do before the pandemic? What was your line of work? What? Yeah. No, no, it was a tourist attraction. Mostly in the summer. When the shark wasn't there. Yeah. Do you know? Yeah. Yeah. He, he he raises his glass and he just looks at Martha and he's not cutting you off directly, but he looks at Martha and says, "Would it would it be would it be too much to ask for another glass of wine?" So he effectively cuts you off and then he looks at you and he says, 
this is actually really cute. He says, not many people of your age survived. He said, like, I, I haven't heard anyone talk like this for a while now. Like, and, and please carry on. Tell me about how the generation that's rebuilding let you guys down while you've been secluded on this island. So kind of leans forward with his hand in his cheek or his hand on his chin, I should say, waiting for you to continue with your little rant. Is he being an obtuse prick? I'm not liking um, this little whippersnapper. No, he's kind of responding <laughs> to, to like Doug being a bit of a dick to him, right? But he's also like, it, it's a little bit like when you tell people that, you know, Doug's telling me how terrible he is. And like, from his perspective, he, he's part of Survivor Squad, right? He's told you very proudly that so far he's managed to locate over 200 people and relocate them to the, uh, to, you know, some of the government camps where they're feeding people and providing medical care. So he seems to be super proud of what he's been doing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he smiles at you and says i'm from a regulated militia you remember that the well regulated we put we you know we've we're living to the letter of that i'm not here from the federal government and then he says under his breath and he's like yeah, i guess i am kind of here from the federal government and looks at martha did did you say yes or no to another glass of wine for me by the way I'm seriously okay. contemplating giving him some belladonna wine. <laughs> Get that tincture um, out. <laughs> where is um who else is here? Oh, I've still got my radio. Yeah, let me let me get that for you. I'm gonna leave. Um I will I'll nod to um Doug to sort of keep an eye on him. And I will, yeah, I'll go out of the room and I will contact um, Morgan Freeman on the radio. <laughs> I'll tell him to go into the cab of the plane and pull the radio out. Well, we, we were, we were over there doing, doing stuff while all this conversation was going on. Uh, unless you okay, so let's, I, was I was waiting yeah. for my 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 turn to jump in. Yeah, beautiful. So let's let's take a let's. Uh, <laughs> sorry for splitting the party. Let's take a dramatic break, and I don't have anything set up. Let's head over to Pete and Cyrus. Um, and Here by the way, so Cyrus, more glasses of wine. You're missing out on the wine while these guys are getting him drunk. Um, but uh, Cyrus, by the way, Cyrus again, like in in his background as a, a potential uh, player character, he can fly planes, right? He has his own plane license, and there are three planes that are at the airport, and one of them is Cyrus's. So he's pretty familiar with this type of equipment or that type of plane. So Pete, uh, over to you. What are, what are you and Cyrus up to? Yeah, I wanted to say. Uh, so he he knows how to fly. He knows these planes. Yeah. We're going to search it top to bottom, and I want him to look over the radio equipment and know, like, all the channels and, like, you know, if there's a way to see the backlogs of all the different uh, frequencies he's been using and, you know, just, you know, every every bit of info out of it. All right. So let's... sheets for where you came from. So let me just do something with Cyrus. Yeah, I don't so... know if they start keeping flight logs in there and everything like that. Let's calculate how much fuel the yeah. so they must be doing some sort of all right. So you said he landed heavy. So oh yeah, what what is the cargo? What what's making it so heavy? It, it, beautiful. So let's let's have you figure this out. Um I'm looking at Morgan Freeman right now. Um <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's have he, – he set up for a group check. So <clears throat> let's have you guys make either a vehicle check or a research check or even a uh, – general knowledge wouldn't really cut it unless you've got a wild success. But feel free to um, – you, you should be – in fact, let me see his character sheet. Let me make sure you can see it in your journal. I got my uh, group check clicked. All right, beautiful. So you should be able to see uh, Cyrus in your. Um, you should be able to click him and see his character sheet and stuff. All right, let's see here, Mister Mofo.
It doesn't look like it gives me um, access to his information. I just see his icon. Oh, interesting. All right, so let me see if I can fix that. So um, let me... Probably did that wrong. If you look at the screen that I've been sharing in Ninja, you'll see uh, his character sheet there. Where's that? Sorry, what's the deal here? Hold on one second. Oh, here we go. That's why. All right. So you should be able to to see him now. Like I, I had it set incorrectly. Can you can you click him and see it? Oh, yep, I can. There you go. Sorry. All right. And you wanted me to roll. Um... Well, whatever you're doing, like it's it, you could argue this is research, right? You could argue this is vehicles, like this, you know, whatever, you, whatever perception, even like whatever you think this is, um, make a group check because you've got Cyrus helping you, and again, he has familiarity with this plane. So, well, tell, tell me again what you're doing. You said you were searching it, uh, yeah, yeah, we're gonna search it top to bottom and figure out what uh, what the heavy cargo is. And I figure maybe if he knows any hidey holes or uh, you know, places that where people might stash things and. Also, the information, like all the flight logs and uh, the frequencies he's been using. All right, perfect. So make a research check. A group right. check with Cyrus. And actually, have a, have a plus one C mod if it's not too late. It would have been 13. It wouldn't have been a while. It doesn't matter. It like, been a 13. Yeah, it would have been a 13. So it wouldn't have been a wild success. So um so you're 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 able to glean a lot, right? So the first thing the Cyrus notices when when you when you turn on the radio, that there's nothing, right? So he kind of flips through that there's really no way to see the radio stations. There's presets, right? Again, this is very much forget the bomber. This is very much a civilian plane, right? So there's a bunch of presets on there, but there's like no history that you can look through. But as Cyrus is cycling through all the different radio stations, there just doesn't seem to be anything. Like there's there's nothing. As if he's not been using it or as if there's no one broadcasting, right? And again, like you're smart enough to recognize, like, you know, like it, it was tuned to like, you know, 98.8 or whatever when you found it, right? So you don't hear anything. But you could listen into the frequency he had it tuned to, and there's just nothing there, right? So, you know, it could be the noise broadcasting, right? So you might want to say something in it, but ostensibly you don't oh, notice no. anything up front. No, we definitely don't want to start talking into it, no. <laughs> so there's no flight logs, right? Like everything's manual, right? So there's kind of like the clipboard where you'd, you know, I should probably do a little bit more research on these planes, but there's no flight computer or anything, right? There's nowhere to kind of log where he's been. And because it's all manual, there's nothing that you can kind of ascertain from. He hasn't written anything down, right? Now, you, you can see, and Cyrus checks this, that it does look like the plane is empty of fuel, right? So um, from the cockpit, at least, it looks like he was being truthful about that. He has some kind of flight leak, or he was just completely out of fuel when he landed. And then um, make, a, make a group perception check rather than a research check. No C mod. Hey, Mina, welcome back. Ouch. Yeah, yeah. There's no. You, you don't find. You know. So what you find, it, it, it. There's nothing particularly heavy in there, right? And with no fuel, this should be even kind of light, right? So if you had to put it down to anything, like it looked like it was just a clumsy landing, right? Because again, you, you and Cyrus. He looks at the plane. He was like, "Hey, I, I had one of these when I back when I lived in San Francisco." He said, "Like, there's no hidden compartments, right?" He kind of goes around and he bangs on all like the fuselage and everything. He's like, "Like, th there's nothing in here, right? There's no, there's nothing hidden, right?" So, like, if there was anything heavy, you'd be able to see it. So, just pro it, it, you know, and Cyrus confirms it, right? It was like this is probably just him being a jackass and probably just not either not knowing the plane very well or underestimating the landing or the approach or whatever. But he's putting it down more to to bad flying than anything. So you said he mentioned a, a, a fuel Sorry. leak. Yeah. So while he was giving the story to the others, right? And frankly, you wouldn't have been there for that, right? So he was giving the story to the others, and he said that he hadn't actually planned 
on on landing today, he said. But while he was circling overhead, he realized that he was losing uh, fuel at a precipitous rate. Right, so he said he realized he must have had a, a you know a fuel leak, and he came into land. So one of the things he told the group was that he'd need to repair his plane and refuel before he could leave. So again, like from the cockpit at least, the plane has no fuel. Like you know whether or not he had any or he's got a fuel leak, you don't know from there. But there, there's no fuel in the plane. Can I? tap on the tank dun, dun, and see if it really is empty or that's just a gauge that's misdialed. Yeah, so if you get outside and again, Cyrus will uh, go with you, right? But like when you're banging on like the fuel tanks, like Cyrus, like and he opens it and it's, it's like bangs on it. It's like, seems empty, it seems hollow, right? So if you're thinking there's something in there or being smuggled, I, I make another research check. <laughs> nice, Martha. There we go. Yeah, so so you get the feeling that as you're looking around, the 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 the, the fuel is empty, right? And there's nothing like weird or untoward about it, right? But as Cyrus is looking under the plane, he can't with without removing some of the panels to get to the engine, he can't really tell what's going on with it, right? So, you know, whether or not you guys think you have enough time to take, and it's getting late, right? You've probably got some lights in the airport that you could put on on a like, generator or whatever, but it's kind of getting late. So, you know, it would be a ballsy move to start taking the plane apart to look at it mechanically. Or would it? Or would it? <laughs> hey, you have a radio, and Cyrus is in touch with Martha, so you could probably delay him as as long as well, possible. Does uh, does he get that that you know call in yet? How much time has passed? You know, while they're talking, and I, then he goes out for that wine talk. You know, so given given the amount of time, we'll, we'll switch back to the others because this, or you know, like we'll, we'll include the others now because I think the amount of time it took you to get to the airport, talk to Cyrus, go down, examine the plane. I think that's probably 30 to 45 yeah. minutes. So yeah, I think I, that's... I never, I never left the airport. I just let them go. Wander oh, okay. And sure. Like me and Cyrus are like, like we got, we got to work. Yeah. So, so you've had like, so this brings us up to the point where Martha's uh, reaching out to you, right? He's had a glass or two of wine, had a little bit of cheese, told the story and kind of answered some of the questions. So Martha and Pete, like you, you two are talking to each other by walkie talkie. What's, what's going on? Hey, Doug, I suppose you've been through the plane already? Hey, yeah, we're still going through it a little bit. Uh, give, him, give him some wine. How'd you know he was going to drink wine? <laughs> uh, I, yeah. I could, uh, I could it. smell it on his breath when he landed. It's a safe bet. You're a slosh, Martha. You're a slosh. It's a safe bet. Uh, Martha doesn't drink any of the wine. She always has some with her, but she just pretends to. Um, the... Do we know where he came from? He's you, can some, it out. Uh, you, you, you can see enough from the instrument. Cyrus knows enough to say, hey, this has come from like his best guess. If you go back to the screen that I'm sharing, his best guess based on this is that either came from, uh, it, it looks like it could have come from Detroit, but he says like given the, you know, he was at the tower and he thought it came from the south. So it could have curved in from Detroit, but he said it's more likely based on the instruments and the reading that it came from Toledo. He's trying to tell us that he's part of a uh, bigger, uh, well, a new factored government uh, Correct. in the US. I'm talking to... Me and catching him up on oh, sorry. what uh, Muggins has told us, uh, and I'm assuming we're just cr we're a bit non-believing of this. I mean, we we have it good here. I assume. Let's I mean, have I'm you. Not sure. Let's have you all make 60. a gut instinct roll. Sorry, I should have done this earlier. Let's have you all make Matt. Does gut instinct work? Let me get back to the farmhouse. Does gut instinct work in the game, or should we roll manually? Uh, it works. Uh, you click on uh, open up your character sheet. Everybody open up their character sheet. Follow along with Mr. Matt. Hmm. 
<laughs> and then gut instinct down the bottom you pick one of the uh sway skills that you want to run it against oh yeah beautiful oh man i love you so if you look at the screen the screen i'm sharing is where matt just said gut instinct bottom right choose one of those skills martha and jenny And then choose the target that you're doing it against. Yep. They got 13 or one off of. Well, uh, which one should I go for first? Um, so perception you don't have. I'm looking at it on the screen. Perception you don't have. Psychology you have one in. Streetwise doesn't exist anymore, so we need to change that. But uh, I, I would make a psychology check. Okay. Choose target. Um, carpet director. Captain Matthews. Okay. And Matt, what, what what are you guys rolling for? It's like this is just to see whether or not you believe him, correct? Um, yeah, I, I want a general. Is this government thing on the kosher, or is he? Uh, is he just uh, for the shit, basically? So he seems to like you know. Uh, Doug, you don't really get a read on him, right? Like uh, that little uh, upset that you two had backwards and forwards, right? You don't really know what to make of this guy. But Martha, you, you know, both you and Jenny are good at trusting your gut instincts. I I in terms of whether or not he's to be believed, he seems pretty genuine in his story, right? And he, he seems to be, you know, y you get the impression that he really felt like he was telling you something that he thought you'd be excited to hear. And that's not the case, right? So whether or not he's being genuine remains to be seen. But it feels like he's it feels like he believes what he's telling you. I just don't believe in his cause. In yeah, look, I don't. I I'll come in with a I'll come in with a glass of wine, and before they get back at it, I'll just say, um, so what's your job, Matthew? Is is it to transport us back? He says that his job is to uh, is to find people, right? He said part of that is taking people with me. He said, and if, if you want any of you want to leave, uh, as soon as I get my my plane repaired and get it refueled, and I'm out of here, he said, like, or I can radio my superiors and they can send a pickup for me. He's, he, you know, he makes it very clear. He's picking up on Jenny's hostility, right? So he makes it very clear. People know where he is, right? Like, you know, he, he had to tell them like this isn't like some random organization. So he says, like, his job is really to locate survivors. He said there are other planes that transport people and their goods. But he said, like, you know, as much as he can fit into his plane, he's, he's done before, right? And he says, when I was flying over yesterday, he said, I, I, I had some people in my plane with me then, which is why I didn't uh, spend more time kind of circling. He said, so wh whatever's needed of me. He, he kind of smiles and he's like, survivor squad, we just go where we're needed. What's his plane? What's his plane as well? Say that again, Matt. This plane looks big, yeah? No, it's a small plane. Like, I, I'm not sure you were here, but I, I pulled it up. It's a Cessna 172, right? I think I, I, I pulled it off the screen or I closed it. Oh, hold on, I'm going to sneeze. Okay. So it would be something that you send them out on if you're... Thank you. Yeah, you know... If you guys bring that up, or maybe he kind of like he even says it, he says like he's a civilian, right? He says like he's not military. It's part of why he's part of the what they call the regulated militia. 
he said like you know he's just one of the civilians that's been pulled in that has a certain set of skills so he said like i'm not a commercial pilot i just said like i love to fly and he he looks over at doug and he's kind of like you know i've just realized like i know what it is you remind me of my uncle right and he says uh you know my uncle used to love star trek like i'm guessing you did like you're from that same generation and he he, he raised me watching this movie and listening to you talk can't help but think about that thing about the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few and he said, right now, there's a lot more survivors out there that have it a lot tougher than the people on this island. He says, so, like, again, we can do this the easy way or the hard way. He says, people know where I am. He said, like, you, you can... You hold can on, throw- hold on, hold on. Before, before you continue, why would we be doing anything a hard way? You can't spend any resources in moving groups to other places. I mean, that seems ridiculous. It's all about survival, yeah? Yeah, he says again, like, there's some relocation areas, right? He says there's one in Toledo. He said there's another one that's in Akron, Ohio, right? He said that, like, they're all over the place, right? He said that the U.S. government is locating people that have skills that can, you know, can provide, or, like, the, or, or you know, just have skills. He said he's bringing people together. Their job is to bring the survivors and the citizens together to reconstitute the U.S. So, yep. like, okay, I understand, understand where you're coming from with that. Well done, Matthews, but. So what you're saying is you'll take a bunch of tourists or tour guides, which is kind of what the uh, what the island has. That's what we were, and you'll take them to a place that they were able to live in, and then take them to a place where they will use up more resources. I'm not understanding where where that works out. Um, if you're taking this relationship with you to other places. Aren't you just putting more people in smaller areas in cities that can't provide for them? Yeah, and what are your what are these places like, and what are just, we going to do? It just seems a bit weird. I'd love to talk to these people. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we're more than happy to be saved, guys. Surely, because you know, I mean food on the table we wouldn't have to ration all of our stuff blah 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 but at the same time i i wouldn't want to put other people out we're we're able to just about look after ourselves out here it seems pretty stupid if we become a burden on other people uh, but i'd be happy to uh discuss that on the radio with your uh, bosses just to confirm and uh, make sure we weren't putting anybody out get out of that matthews so he he, uh, he he says, "Wow, this is a lot of questions, right? This is really a lot of questions." He says, Let, "Let's let's wind this up a little bit, or wind this back a little bit." He said, uh, "To to your point, Doug." He said, uh, "Wind it up." Yeah, wind it back. He says, uh, "I you know the survivor camps, right?" He said, "So here's what we've got, right? There's uh, a lot of craziness out there at the moment." He said, "There's a lot of uh, rule of gun." is the way that things have gone for the last couple of years. So what the U.S. government is doing is providing protection to innocent people, right? Protection to citizens that don't want this to be Mad Max, right? Like they're they're trying to offer that as a certain like like security or whatever, right? And he said, and, you know, in return, people are uh, working fields, people like, you know, to to each their means, right? He said, like, we got plumbers, we got like anyone that's got any skills, he said, like, we're just putting them to use. He said, this is all for the greater good. And he said, like, this isn't a dictatorship. He said, sure, right now there's no civilian government. He said, but that's step two. Right now we're, we're just trying to locate enough survivors and bring them together in, like, a series of interconnected communities for the greater good. And he... he, he, he- He, he, he kind of he, he he looks confused and he says uh i don't see how helping your your country is a punishment he said i i keep saying it but you guys look a lot better fed than most of the people out there he said this island can support more people so he said like you don't want to leave you don't have to leave he said but you will be getting new visitors you will be getting new neighbors like there's too much unused property here right i mean he, 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 he looks at you, and again, like, this is all guesswork, but he's like, what, there's, what, 60, 70? You're like, how many of you are left? He said, this island can sustain at least 500 people. He said, there's fishing grounds. There's, like, seems to be farming areas. He said, I'm not really clear why you wouldn't want to help your fellow Americans.
Is this line the Canadian line? It is, isn't it? Wait. You are 100% yeah. on the Canadian side, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, okay, well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just just uh, let's back the bus up. So if, if you want to run a rule of thumb over, you know, America on high, etc., we're fine with that and fine with, you know, trying to reestablish a government and everything. But forcing upon people in a different area um, and, quite frankly, a different country, uh, you can't do that. You have no, unless you've changed all the values of America, of course. Um, he laughs at you and he says, lady, that's problem. the American way. He, he laughs and he was like, oh, I'm guessing you're one of the Canadian citizens. That is the American way. <laughs> I'm starting to go off you, Matthews. And we might just send you on your way. Has that sent? He kind of laughs. I'm assuming, he says, I'm assuming you're fine with that. Yeah, I'm totally fine with that. He said, uh, "Help me repair my plane. Help me get some uh, fuel." Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, you need some help repairing your plane. His it, it, his mood's turning. Right, he senses that you guys are being antagonistic. Right, so he's a little bit like, "Ah, oh, okay, so this is how it's going to be." Right, he's had a couple of glasses of wine. He said, "Okay." I see how this is. I don't need any help. He said, I'll repair my plane. He said, if you've got fuel, I'm requisitioning it on behalf of the American government. If you don't like it, yeah. <laughs> Would be fine if you're in America again. Yeah. And it, that up already. It, it, it's it's so kind of depending how far you, you, you're willing to push these individual issues, right? Because he says, yeah, I'm going to requisition enough fuel for me to leave this island and go back to people that are actually like looking for help and people that need something, right? So he stands up and says, uh, you know, I, 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 I get it. I've rubbed you guys the wrong way. I thought you'd be excited the, the society was coming back. He said, fair enough. You don't want any part of it. Is there somewhere I can sleep till tomorrow? I'll repair my plane. I'll appreciate it if you give me a, like enough fuel to get back to the American mainland. And guess what? You won't see me again. Uh, I think you've made it quite clear that we will be seeing you and your friends again if we allow you to do that. So he eyes you up, right? And again, like he's not getting aggressive, but he is the only armed person in the room, right? So he's, he's, he's stood up at this point, right? He stood up a couple of minutes ago, and again, not aggressive. He stood up and asked where to go, and he's like, hey, I'm asking nicely again. There seem like a lot of empty houses. I, I can go and find one of those if, if you guys don't want to put me up, and I, I'm, I'm trying to be nicer. I'm trying to be friendly here. But, but again, it feels to me like you're trying to cross a line and put me and my government in the enemy camp. Am I misunderstanding this? Yeah. Yeah, I see you're... There's no functioning, and he says it through gritted teeth. He said, I've already said this twice. He said, there's no functioning uh, Canadian government. He said, far as we can tell, there's only a functioning U.S. government. He said, <coughs> I'm here to rescue you, and you guys are treating this like uh, I I'm here to invade your island. So he says, I I'm done with argue. Okay. So he says, I I I I he says fair hey, enough. Look, hey, look. You, you are quite happy to stay here, which I suspect is what you will end up doing. What do you mean in the in your in this wine tasting place? Uh, yeah, you can take up. Uh, I've got a spare room over there. Yeah, there, there, there are. Yep. So he, 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 again, he's he's very cordial to use your word, Matt, and very charming. And he says, uh, "All right, well, I appreciate all of the wine." He says, "I appreciate all of the interesting conversation." And if you'll excuse me, I, I'm I'm going to retire. Let, let's have you all make before he heads out. Let's have you all make um, a, a perception check. <laughs> My cousin Marilla. <laughs> Oops. Perception. There we go. Oh yeah, Pete, you couldn't get oh. one. Jenny Jenny's had too many glasses of wine and is dozing. So <laughs> So after he's gone, like, I mean, I, either you stay here and talk or you go back to Martha's house, but one of the two. So you guys kind of compare notes, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I, I guess, first of all, like, w w once you're alone and once, once he's gone to bed, like, are you staying here or are you going to Martha's farmhouse?
Uh, can I contact someone to watch over the house and just let me know if he disappears and we'll all put her off? So, I mean, there's, yeah, like Pete's probably the person that you would most trust with that. And he is at the airport right now. I mean, there's a bunch of other people that you can call. You could call Alex or Alexis from the bar. There's a bunch of people that you can call. So it wouldn't be, Martha, let's have you make a, um, uh, an inspiration check. Any pluses? No. Uh, okay. Yeah, you're able. You, you can get somebody else on the radio, and you're able to convince somebody to uh, to come to the house, right? And the, you know the the uh, how, however you'd figure it out, right? I mean, the, the this door. I don't know if you're planning on locking him in. Like, let's see if there's a room with a bathroom. Like, so let's yeah. let's say he was actually in in this room down here, right? But you would be able to lock him in place if you so decided. But you could also call, like, you'd have enough people with that inspiration check. You could have enough people come and sit and wait shifts, right, and just kind of make sure there's no noise in the house while you guys are doing whatever you're doing next. I'll just get someone to watch the house and make sure he doesn't leave. If he does leave, then they'll come directly to the airport. Okay. To let us know. <laughs> All right. We don't want to make him feel like he's locked in, otherwise then he... Like okay, nine is the other way already. Okay, so are you like as he's going to bed? I mean, do you guys like any any parting words? Like in terms of like, I mean, are you gonna uh, are you gonna like come and get him in the morning or talk to him or like he, he he's he's already said that he's just looking to try and fix his plane. If if you'll be so kind, take some of his take some of your fuel and then leave. So uh, that that was kind of what he was planning on doing. Like, have you asked to meet with him or are you can just let him go to bed? Like, what what is your plan there? Uh, again, cordial. Um, we'll we'll talk again over breakfast. Okay. Are you All okay right. with a uh, eight o'clock wake up call? I he, he kind of smiles and he says, "Well, I might it might be a little bit early for some wine." He said, "But if you've got any more of that cheese or anything else to nibble on that's delicious like that," he said, "Then I'll, I'll gladly see you at eight o'clock." And again, he's all smiles. He's all polite, very charming as he waves good night to everyone and retires to his room. Noodles likes to jump on people to wake them up. Who doesn't? It's not. It's not my wife's favorite trait of mine, but like it, it is something that I think a lot of us tend to do. All right, let me let's get back to the airport. All right, so you're back at the airport now. Um, Pete and Cyrus are still searching the plane. Yeah, did we get to the bottom of what the heaviness is? No, again, like Cyrus has really put it down more to bad piloting than than anything with the plane, right? But Cyrus also says, hey, if he really was running out of fuel, that would also cause that, right? The plane doesn't have enough uh, power. So he said, like, it's very possible that he was coming in. The engine was just doing, like, uh, spurts, and, and he kind of landed heavy because of that. Because they're they really, after, like, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, an hour and a half or so of searching and a couple of successful checks, you, you don't see anything, you don't find anything that would uh, explain why it was such a heavy landing. Any any cargo in the back? Like, what is he got? Nothing. You see uh, a couple of a couple of things, right? So there's a there's a backpack in there, right? And there's a couple of ammunition clips. There's a couple of empty uh, MREs or meal ready to eat packets, right? And one of them has been folded over. But as you open it, it seems like kind of like nasty and rotted, right? And so um, there's no real food in there. There is a flashlight. There's a pair of binoculars, a heavier jacket, right? But you don't really nothing in there of any great success or any great consequence. So as you guys were heading over and you're comparing notes, Jenny, Jenny was just like, you know, sucked in by his smile and angered by his words and his offer. But the things that you notice, right? So he, he, he was wearing a fly jacket, like a military looking fly jacket, but he wasn't wearing a uniform, right? He was wearing like sports shoes, like, you know, whatever, like rather military boots, like jeans and a t-shirt underneath the, the fly jacket. Um, he did have, he did have some dog tags around his neck. Um, but you know, he, 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 he goes along with what he said that he was a civilian, but like, as you're walking over, like it, it just seems a little bit, a little bit incongruous, right? That he's here representing the U S government. Oh, uh, sorry. Um, when we said we'd be putting into bed, I had no intention of going to sleep. I was off to the airport. 
Well, no, I this is I said you're comparing notes. This, oh, is, this is you okay. comparing notes as you're getting to the airport. So again, Jenny didn't notice anything, but these are the things that you and Doug notice, right? Again, it's, it's in line with his story, but there doesn't seem to be much military about him, except that he's got a gun on his hip and he's wearing dog tags and he has a flight jacket. Other than that, like everything's pretty civilian. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Hey guys, I'm gonna grab some water. I I'll be back in thirty seconds. Well, he's already out of fuel. Huh. Oh, that would be terrible. Does he even have a parachute? Might be, you know, oftentimes they don't even fly with him. <laughs> Replace it with a tablecloth. <laughs> Probably Cyrus could rig up the, uh, you know, the back flaps or something so they give out. Uh, if you're looking to kill him, why are you, why are we making it looking like an accident that could go wrong? Um, we'd be wasting fuel. We just do a mayday on his um, on his line. But that could still be accidental. Yeah, but we don't need to waste any fuel then either. Hey, I'm back. So I heard some of those plans. I've got my Bluetooth on and it faded out like here and there, but it sounded like you guys are planning to kill him. So bring me up to speed on the, the last couple of minutes. I don't think we should kill This is me now, character. So I don't think we should kill him. I think we just hold him here. I think he's now a resident of our area. And then if we if they do send other people, at least we've got someone that knows what their plans might be. We hide the plane. Well, he likes the cheese. Hmm. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I'm going to find a little video clip for you guys for the, the, the sure. Cyrus's goats. Yeah. It's actually Martha's goats. Let's not give Cyrus any more credit oh. than he deserves. So wait, fill me in on the plan. So the plan is to hide his plane, keep him here hostage. This is a little bit like the prisoner, if you remember that TV show, Matt. Like, is 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 that is that the plan? Uh, the guys were talking about killing him, but oh, let's get back to that. I was I was gone for too much of that. Is this Jenny? Is she channeling her inner uh, Marilla? What? No, no, never, never. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so Doug, you're, you you could absolutely make that happen, right? You'll you, you'll be able to find out more about the plane and do more to the plane because of your mechanics background than Cyrus or Pete, right? So uh, that that would be very easy for you to, to sabotage it to what whatever, right? And Cyrus could like oh, I couldn't fly and jump out. I guess I don't think he's brave enough for that. But yeah, you you could do all of that. I, the difficulty would potentially be keeping this guy on the island because again he. Not that you, the rest of you don't have guns, but he is armed. Not if you take the extra clips that you find in that bag. All he's got is what is on him. 
I just really don't want to go to a work camp or anything. Because that's what it was sounding like. Well, he, he did say that you'd be able to stay here, right? But, like, even if you stayed here, other people are coming to the island, right? There's no... I mean, this would be a work camp, you know? Yeah, kind of, right? So but at least it'd be a home work camp, right? I mean, you'd, like, you'd, you'd have all your, your, your own belongings around you as you work to the bone by a feudal master. It's not all bad. It's a work from home camp. <laughs> <laughs> do we have about i mean how much fuel do we got i'm assuming we don't have you got a fair amount, right? I mean, the the you know it keeps for a good while that kind of like for airplane diesel, right? So you've got I don't know what a good measurement is, right? But you've got easily enough on the plane to let him fuel up and for you guys not to notice it. And again, there's three planes that are in the airport. You guys just aren't using them, right? And no one's using Cyrus can fly them, but nobody's used them. Yeah. Can't we just hide the fuel and just say we've been out for years or for a year? No, there's there's big fuel. I mean, you could, right? I mean, you could let it. You could, you could empty the drums and get rid of like the tanks of fuel that are there, but you know it still smell for like days as it's kind of absorbed into the ground, right? So there's no way. I mean, you could say he had an accident, but there's no way he wouldn't know that the well, fuel I mean, had not I mean, been hide it into another building or something. No. No, it's like a big uh, fuel cylinder drum that they use to refuel, right? So it's really more like a big gas tank, right? And there's too much in there. You couldn't make it mobile. Just trash the plane. <laughs> Stick a knife in the tire. <laughs> One and done. <laughs> we don't have any spare tires. What's your comment, Arthur? We'll put a bunch of... Uh, I don't agree points. with sticking him as a prisoner. I think we can only have him as a, another person on the island. And I, I don't agree with keeping him prisoners. You, you I just... also don't agree with him trying to take his prisoners in some fashion or another with some sort of government that I very much doubt exists. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I guess you can give him a choice. Can what what is the choice going to be? Or live here amongst us, or don't. And he can read from that what he wants. Stuff the motor with corn. Yeah, I mean, sugar in the petrol's going to just, yeah, it's just going to kill it regardless. Yeah, it doesn't matter what happens. Yeah, remember it. children of the corn whenever the car breaks down and they come back to it and like the hood is up and like the whole motor is just like full of corn. A creepy moment. <laughs> creepy moment. <clears throat> so as you're at the airport, right? It's like eight or nine in the evening or whatever. So like I mean, are you are you examining the plane more? Are you discussing? Are you what what are you guys up to next? We gotta have a plan before he gets up. I guess. Uh, coming up. Well, no. So, depending on what that is, we will have to have a plan for the small uh, for the morning to relieve him of his weaponry. Can I take a walk? You can go back to the um, house to make sure he's not like he's still sleeping there. Because we just left him alone. We left someone on guard. Oh, you did? Okay, never mind. I, I missed yeah. that one. Sorry. It's okay. Yeah, there's all kinds of plants that'll make you really sleepy. And you don't sleep forever. I mean, mm -hmm. you don't sleepy. <laughs> hey, Jenny, make a pharmacology roll. Okay, 
Wait one second, let me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, pharma found it. Oh no, that's not it. Okay, here we go. Wow, data. Yeah, so <clears throat> you would easily be able to whip up something that you could either do i mean whatever you'd want right i mean you, if you wanted to poison him if you want to keep him sedated i mean like i, I don't know that you could make a truth serum but i think there's a lot of different things that you'd be able to do with that role depending on what your outcome is i mean yeah i mean whatever you guys decide i mean you know we got stuff that'll really really make you sleepy if you mix it with wine or well the tincture i guess we've got sleepy. someone's yawning and making me sleepy <laughs> Sorry, that was me. Uh, maybe maybe give him some stuff for breakfast that will will give us the edge. Okay. Yeah. Well, he we can't let him go, but at the same time, what's the state of the radio, uh, Morgan Freeman? Yeah. And whoever else was looking at him. Pete, what do you remember? Hmm? What do you remember about the radio? About the radio? Mm -hmm. That we couldn't get any information off of it? Yeah. So Martha was just asking about it, so I'm just kind of relaying that. Maybe you weren't here, Matt. So Cyrus and P uh, examined the plane. They couldn't find anything of, of any real relevance, right? And they when they switched the radio on, there's just static, right? And they they scroll through a bunch of channels, but they couldn't find anything broadcasting anywhere. Now they didn't they didn't transmit, but they didn't hear anything on any frequency from anyone. So there's no like like memory, like they don't save like certain frequencies in like memory. Yeah, they do, right? It's almost like th think of it as a more advanced, like you know, old fashioned radio car preset, right? So you can cycle through a bunch of them, right? You can look at every preset that's in there, and there's. You know, let's call it 14 different channels, right, that are preset to, and there's nothing on any of them. But again, you haven't transmitted, right? So people might be out there listening, but no one is talking as you're cycling through the, excuse me, cycling through the different channels. Like the ones he has saved? Yeah. Yeah. You okay. go through all his favorites, yeah. even the Christian yeah. rock channel. But, it, but at least uh, <laughs> I wanted to make note of those frequencies at least. You could absolutely do that. <clears throat> all right. And maybe Cyrus can monitor them up in the uh, tower if that's possible. Yeah, there's a radio up there, right? And again, like, you know, there's there's a couple of portable generators that Pete, uh, sorry, Doug has put down here previously. And so you, you can listen to those. Whoever's up, hey, Matt, stop it. Like, you're the middle of your sorry. afternoon. You're the only one that doesn't get to yawn. It's later for everyone on the call except for you. It's like fucking 1.30 there or 2 o'clock or something. So that's just cruel and unusual punishment. So, yeah, Cyrus, well, whoever's up. Faster. Yeah, I can't talk much faster. I turn into a single turn like drone. Um, so Cyrus can listen, right? But Cyrus complains, hey, it's time to get somebody else up here, right? So Martha, you'll have to switch him out. But somebody could sit and listen, right? And whoever's manning the radio or up in the tower, like, you know, Pete, uh, sorry, Doug can get enough batteries and juice to keep that radio going so you'd be able to listen at all times. What else are you guys doing before bed, or what other plans are you formulating before you meet him for breakfast? Oh. I don't want the radio working just in case he does get to his radio. Is there something we uh, do? You take out a fuse, or yeah, fuse. Are you, are you trying to make it look like you've broken it, or are you trying to make it look like it's just not working? Just not working. Let's have Doug make a mechanics check. Make it make a group check with with Cyrus and and uh, again it would be mechanics, but I think he's got uh, attributes that might help you with it because he knows planes. So like disable the radio with him. Sorry, I'm saying that I'm I'm shoving cake in my mouth and I should have been talking. I just ate a team. And a mofo. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> so, <clears throat> yeah, look at that. A moment of low insight. You, as you're doing it, 
you realize the next time you have to do this, you won't break it in quite as an obvious way as you've broken it, right? Because again, you were trying to disable it and you have disabled it, but you've broken the casing on the radio and you pulled it off the dashboard as you were trying to do whatever you were doing to it. So that, that <laughs> as he comes back, in fact, you boosted the signal. No, <laughs> like just taking one. Duct tape and Gorilla Glue. Maybe, but that would be a bit of a stretch. Like, like it's very likely that anyone looking at this, like even an African tribesman that had never previously seen this piece of equipment would look at this and say, what the fuck, who broke this? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Someone manhandled this piece of equipment. So, yeah, it, it's uh, you, you fail at that. So as soon as he comes back, he'll know that you've broken his radio. Well, I was hoping for a little nope. better on that, guys. Oh, well, we got to uh, kill him now. <laughs> so let me let me get this right. Do we have another plane that he can get away on? Yes. Okay, so can we decommission them all in such a way? Guys, this time without the sledgehammer? <laughs> we, can, we can take the keys out. Yeah. Well, he may be able to hotwire... Uh, if he's if he's got this thing do we do we know if like there are there keys to start up an engine or anything or is i mean can we tell if he just got in this there's no way he came from government yeah or or some like military organized thing without fuel it's it goes without saying um, that would not happen. Even if they were doing secular rates and stuff, they would have something planned to make it relatively efficient. Otherwise, you know, there's no way he's coming here without being able to he, get back. He did say he got a, uh, a fuel leak on the way there, right, which is why he came into land, right? So, again, whether or not you believe him or he's telling the truth is to be determined, but that was his story, that he ran out of fuel on the way. And we can't tell whether it is a proper leak or not. You, you'd have to. Um, that goes back to what I said earlier. And Doug's here now, right? But you'd have to do uh, a mechanics check <clears throat> in order to be able to take the plane apart enough uh, to see whether or not, like, the fuel tanks are empty for sure. But without you doing a like more mechanics work on the plane, you can't tell. <laughs> you, you can't tell if there's a fuel leak. Hey, have at it then. Make your mechanics check. Yeah, do it. Do it, Doug. With with Cyrus's help. <laughs> well, that would have would have gave you a plus two. So, Doug, talk me talk to me again about exactly what you were doing. So, um, so as you're looking at it, you, you realize that the fuel pipe itself is not damaged, right? And so <clears throat> it is disconnected for sure, right? But just given your uh, limited experience of these planes, you think it's, it's it, it, your feeling is either this was really badly put together and really badly made, which seems like unlikely for a Cessna, or... It, it looks like maybe this was disconnected to make it look like he had a fuel leak. No, it's, it's empty. What, what do you mean fuel everywhere? Like, the plane's empty. Like, I mean, they're, they're, he really doesn't have any... But it's not a trick, right? There really is no more fuel on the plane. No, 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 none of that, right? So, and hey, let, let me just do a chime check because I know it's 11.30 for a bunch of you, right? And so should we call, it's actually taken longer to get through this. Should we call this for this evening and pick up next time? 
beautiful. Yeah, yeah, there's too much joking and having fun. I don't think that's the point of these games, guys. All right, so... Yeah. What do you mean? All right, so we'll we'll come back next time and we'll we'll talk about what else with the plane. But let me just summarize and kind of like wind down the session. So what you realized is there's no uh, no one's broadcasting on the radio. So without transmitting, you can't confirm it. But it seems like there's there's no one on the other end of that. There's nothing in his plane, right? He really doesn't have any supplies of any note with him. And his plane, it does it is empty of fuel. But what it looks like is either there's been some kind of natural erosion or error or somebody disconnected the fuel plane and, you know, maybe to look at, make it look like he needed to land. So scene goes out and we can pick up there next time. But the next morning, Martha, at 8 a.m., let's just let, end on that note. Like, like, how are you approaching this? What are you planning on doing? Who's going to be there the next morning to wake him up? Uh, Noodles. I think ah. Doug, <laughs> I think Doug would, would be there. We would be tucking into uh, food beforehand and a certain amount of the food that will be on the side uh, that will say he can help his food to, uh, himself to, that will be the drugged food. All right, perfect. All right, is, um, is somebody, what, what are you going to do? Is somebody going to wake him up? Uh, he said he'd be up early -ish. We can yeah, so it's, wake it's, up. It's, uh, 8 o'clock I said I'd wake him up, didn't I? If he's yep. not awake by then, I'll just knock on the door. <laughs> yeah, half past seven, we'll just bang around. Uh -huh. As if we're not planning anything. So the... Um... So, like, time passes. Like, you don't hear anything coming out of that room, right? So, um, you, you know, you're, you're, you're making some noises and banging, like, wooden things again, like pots and pans, and there's nothing coming out of the room yet. Um, I'll knock on the door. Nah, knock on that door. There's no, there's no reply. Nah, for fuck's sake. So when you open it, excuse me, I was just finishing up that cake. When you open it, <clears throat> the window's open, and and he's gone. Right, so you know, there's still some of his stuff in the room, right? Like he had another bag with him that had like a flight log or whatever, or a notepad. Maybe you know he's got a notepad and pencil. He obviously draws pictures every now and then, and uh, you know, a couple of protein bar wrappers. That's still in the room, but he's not there. And been slept in. Say that again. Has the bed been slept in? The bed has been slept in. Yeah. Okay. So. So you guys look at each other in surprise and like a little bit of like, huh, where is our unexpected guest? And that's where the uh, the light comes down or it fades to black on the session and Mina gets to go to bed. <laughs> Why, thank you. <laughs> of course. Thank you all for taking part. I appreciate it. Well, it was fun. Until next time. <laughs> Until next time. Thank you, Mina. <laughs> Thank you guys. Good night. Bye. Hey, and for for um just for those of you by no mean to just drop. So I'm traveling next week. I gotta go to Grand Rapids next week. So we'll be picking up two weeks from tonight and we'll close this session out or this adventure out. That work? Okay. Sounds okay. good. Beautiful. Thank you. All right, Mina, thank you. Go to bed. All of you, thank you so much for taking part. I have so much fun with you guys. I really do. And I look forward to winding this down and figuring out, is Deputy Doug really the boomer that he's pretending to be? Have a good night, everyone. Thank you all. <laughs> good night.